this book has made us to know the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has removed many people from the shackles of idolatry, knowingly or, knowingly or unknowingly. Those whom Allah has guided with this book, Alhamdulillah, they know the oneness of Allah. In our two sittings, we have discussed about this Kitab Tawheed and the importance of the creation and also the reason why Allah raised the messengers to the people. If you still don't get these two topics right, uh, you have to reposition yourself. If you are still doubting the purpose of being on earth, if you don't know that it is to worship Allah alone, uh, you have a problem. You better go and see someone that will heal you psychologically. And also, if you don't know the reasons, oh yeah, keep quiet, yeah, come and sit down here on the floor here. The girls should be at the back. Oh yeah, boys, come and face me here. Guess, oh yeah, stay at their back. So, as I was saying, if you don't know the reason why all messengers of Allah and the prophets were raised to their people, and most especially the final of the messengers, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was sent to the entire universe for the two major creatures, the jinns and the mankind. We don't know why the prophet was raised to us. You have problem. There is no how you can be a true Muslim. You will only remain a nominal Muslim. May Almighty Allah make us to be true Muslims. Today, we want to look at the third issue written in this book. It's a fast from the Holy Quran where Almighty Allah has made emphasis on worshipping Him and also to be righteous to our parents, especially you students of knowledge. You, our students at Al Furso School of Arabic and Islamic Studies. One of our slogan or one of our motto is to be sound academically, be it Islamic or Western education. And the second of our motto is what? Good characters. Good, characters. if you lack characters, you are not among us. You are not our students here. If you are misbehaving to your parents in particular, ah, no, 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 no. We don't teach that nonsense here. And this is one of the teachings that must have good impacts in our lives. Because if you misbehave to your parents, Expect it from your own children as well. Kama tadino to them. Whatever you do to your parents, you will receive it from your children. It is not a cause. But not only that, you know that you can only suffer that on earth. But in the hereafter, if you fail to be dutiful to your parents, you will be punished in the hell. May Allah not make us among the dwellers of hell. So in the fact that we want to look at Surah Tul-Isra, verse 23, 
Almighty Allah says, بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقد ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه You will all memorize this book. Though the Matno, only the test, not the Sheriff. Uh-huh. Inshallah Ta'ala, when the time comes, the book will be uh, introduced to us. It's already in our curriculum. You will memorize it from the beginning to the end. So that if you understand it, you will not become a Muslim that will be running towards uh, fortune tellers when you have problems. Or uh, to go and visit their past that will ask you to kill Ram because of problems. Or you won't be part of those who will become grave worshippers. Those who will visit the, the graves of some sheikh and seek for blessing from the grave. The person that had died, eh, when he was alive, he was unable to rescue people. So will his corpse in the grave now rescue you? This pure insanity, pure madness. Someone that has rotting in the grave will now come and defend you, will now come and give you goodness of this world. If he has power, will he or she die? Eh? No. So that's the reason why you will study that book from the beginning to the end. And that is why we are explaining it during our Madrasa Halko here. Are you all with me? Yes. So that by the time that you start memorizing it, you will not need to explain the meaning to you again. So that's the reason why your attention is very, very essential. It's needed. All what I'm translating, you must pay your adequate attention on it. And if you are wise enough, you can get an exercise book for only this alcohol and start jotting your notes. It will benefit you in this life and in the hereafter. When we were learning like you, there was nowhere to be found. This type of book, this style here, nowhere to be found. That was the reason why majority of our colleagues, they later became uh, soothsayers, herbalists, oracle practitioners. Because we miss the opportunity of this type of uh, book and subject. Is that taking? But if you don't have to hear, automatically you become an idolater, whether you know it or not. Or you become an innovator. Allah Dadale. So that is the reason why in the madrasa or in madaris of Al Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we pay adequate attention on Tawheed. And that is the reason why the idolaters hate us. The Muqtadi, the innovators hate us. These are what the book came to treat for us. May Almighty Allah make it to benefit us. Now, according to this Surah to the Isra, verse 23, Almighty Allah says, Bada Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajim, Wa Qadu Rabbuka Allah Ta'abudu Illa Iya. That is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded us all that we must not worship any other thing except who? Except who? Allah, except him. Wa bil walidaini ihsana. And we should be dutiful to our parents. We should do good to our parents. Before I will delve into the explanation of this book, I quickly want to ship in some points. One, this verse contains two major things. What will benefit us in this life and in the year after is to believe in the oneness of Allah and to worship Him alone. If you believe in multiple gods or if you worship any other thing besides Allah, in this life, you will be punished. When you lie, when you ask the idolaters or those, where is Maryam? When uh, you see those who lack Tawhid, they will not have rest of mind on earth. 
Homo Sarika Kirini. You lack you lack tau he. Your own destiny will not be okay for you. But I'm a Sarika Kiri. You see someone pursuing the life of another person spiritually. Visiting one Babala who abalis from one to another. You will not have rest of mind. If you have Tawheed, you have Allah, you will know that your provision will not go beyond you. Your provisions will not go beyond you. Whatever Allah has this time for you will happen to you in your life. Nobody can snatch your destiny from you. It is Tawheed. So we are talking about the people who are talking about if you have Tawheed, you have rest of mind. You have what? I can't hear you. If you lack Tawheed, you will be restless. You will be restless. You will not have rest of mind. And secondly, to be dutiful to our parents. If you do it, you will become a good Muslim and a good child to your parents in this world, isn't it? Yes. And on the day of judgment, you will also become a good child before Allah and a good Muslim before Allah. So you will have good rewards for doing good to your parents on earth because your own children will reciprocate it. Your own children will do the same to you on earth. While in the year after, you will earn rewards from Allah for being dutiful to your parents. I have disobeyed my parents before. I misbehaved to my parents. Raise up your hand. I know that some of you will not tell, you will not say the truth. I can see those who are truthful now. Aha. Look at the children. Do you understand disobedience to the parents or not be dutiful to your parents? If you want to be dutiful to your parents, one, you obey their instructions. Whatever your daddy or your mommy tells you to do, that is what you will do. Even if you have ulterior motives, you abandon your own. If they ask you to go and get something for them, and you see your friends playing, what do you suppose to do? To join them or to leave them? To leave them. To leave them. But is that what majority of you used to do? Yes. Don't tell like you. Two minutes, two minutes. You will play ball. Two minutes, two minutes. Ten, ten. Abi. Two minutes will now be 20 minutes. 30 minutes. One hour. Are you doing good to your parents when you do such? You are not doing good. If your daddy is hungry or your mommy, he or she now asks you to go and buy something that he or she wants to eat. You now spend one hour playing with your friends. When you come back, what will you say? Talk now. Uh, will you say sorry? You that you don't even want them to know that you are playing. You will tell lie. Oh, they they down. There are plenty of people. Uh -huh. I'm a professor here. Professor in disobedience. So you will find one excuse. You can see now you have done something wrong and you are covering it with something wrong as well. You have committed how many sins? Double sins. You lie to your parents, you maltreat your parents. And there are some of the major sins in the year after that any child that died in such state which Allah does not forgive him or her, we firstly visit where? Hell. Do you want to enter hell? No. So if you don't want to enter hell, you should be dutiful to your pay rent. And some of the things that you should do for your parents to take care of them. Take care of them. 
whether they take care of you or not. Since Allah has vindicated you, Allah has enriched you, you should not take vengeance. Don't take what? Vengeance. I, when I was young, and you didn't take care of me, you didn't pay for my school fees, you just left me alone. I was struggling for myself until when I got to this stage. If not, Allah's mercy. Uh -huh. If you recognize Allah's mercy on you, you should also not fail to replicate such to your parents. You don't correct error with error. Assuming that your parents did not take care of you, fine, leave them alone. They will be held accountable for that on the day of judgment. Is that clear? Yes. Do you want to be punished because of your parents as well in the air after? No. So you do your own, fulfill your own duty to them, take care of them. That is what Allah said. You take care of your father. You take care of your mother. If both of them are alive. And even if they are no more alive, you still take care of them by doing sadako on their behalf. Don't insult your parent. Don't insult how many of you have insulted them before? Yeah. Hey, leave me alone, John. Or you his? Falata kula uma ufin walata ne ari uma and don't shout on them. How many of you have shouted on your daddy or your mommy before? If you have done that, you better go and apologize so that Allah will not punish you because of that. Is that clear? Daddy, mommy, I'm sorry for my past characters to you. I've learned something better from Madrasa now. Whenever you are talking to your parents, you talk with a soft Mind. word. With a soft word. word. And you know the barwe. Can you? You can't tolerate your sister or your brother to root to you, isn't it? Why do you prefer to root to your father and your mother? If you are a good child. So, eh, le baru yepa wa buru ti yin niye. Will you take it from your own son or your own daughter? No. And culturally, culturally, it is very, very bad. Koma di omari akba lakba fi, not to talk of his parents or our parents. So, that is it. You should learn that lesson. Whenever you are with your daddy or with your mommy, try to behave well. Let them see the impacts of this madrasa in you. What about You have hard word. Almighty Allah is condemning it. Don't insult them. Don't say shia on your father or your mother. And don't shout on them. And you should talk to them with honored word. That is how to show respect to your parents. When they send you an errand, you go straight and come back on time. When they command you, do this, that's what you will do. Don't do this or that. You don't do it. Allah make you all good children to your parents and for our community. That is Surah to Al Isra, verse 23. You too, you can go and pick it. There is another thing. I will still remember the fact that follows it. Now, Kodo Amaro Wawaso. That is Allah has commanded and He has admonished us. Wal Muradu Bil Kodo Yuna Al Kodo Wa Sheri Adini Yi Lal Kodo Al Kodari Yi Al Kone Yi. That is the commands, the command that has to do with Islamic law. 
the religious law. Is that clear? Yes. Uh -huh. Not natural law or the distinct one. That is, Allah has commanded us to worship only Him. Now, Rabbuka, Arabu Uwali Malik Al Mutasoli. According to the sheriff here, that when we say Lord, 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 it's beyond ordinary English word, which is when we say Lord, Lord is Lord, according to the English. But in Arabic, Arab, it entails so many things. Part of the, the thing that it entails is that Al Malik, that is Allah, is the king. Allah is what? King. He, he has sovereignty. He has power over all things. Al Mutasori, the controller of all affairs, he controls our affairs. Whatever he, he wishes us or he wants to happen to us, that is what will happen. Nothing can affect it, nothing can remove such from us. And part of Robu is that Al Khalik, the creator, Allah is the creator. Arozik, the provider, he provides all what we need for us. Al Muhyi, he is the giver of life. As we are still alive today, Allah wishes us to be alive. Wahua Al Mumi to Aidan, he is also the taker of life. So if he wants us to cease from assisting, Allah will take our souls and nothing will happen. He may take it while we are in the class. And the yoke of Subulule, who pull lunch and on here, or don't you slat, or while we are asleep, or when you are walking. That is the reason why, as Muslims, you should guard yourselves very well. Masorare, if it will law, let it be a good place. So that even if the death comes to you there, while you lie hand, I read it this morning, uh, Abi, yesterday. A footballer, a Ghanaian footballer, was killed in that earthquake in uh, Turkey. He, is a, he was a player in Turkey. So, uh, the night that the thing happens, his club played in that night. So, immediately that, he finished, in fact, if I can recollect, he even scored in that match. So, he just went to the club with his friend. To go and play one particular game. So by the time that he finished maybe around 11 or 12, he returned back to his house to go and sleep. So around 4 a.m., the earthquake happens and he died. And I think his cause was detected after a week. So he has gone. So any time he earthquake, So look at that. Or into Los Sina, if you don't say Sina, when you have to say, Look at Kusiwe, how will they escape punishment in the year after? So we have to protect ourselves against uh, bad actions. Now, Allah the Rabba Jami Al Alamin bin Nehimati, that is Allah takes care of all the creatures with His blessings. Allah takes care of us with all what he has created for us in terms of food, drinks, air that we breathe with, and how we live on earth. That's the reason why we should not have another Lord except Allah. Now, Allah ta'abudu illa iya. That is, we should not worship another thing except Allah. Hey, and ta'abudu wa la ta'abudu girau. It is Allah alone that we must worship. And we must worship another thing except who? Allah. Wa bilawalidini isana. And to our parents, we must be righteous. We must be dutiful to our parents. Hey, wa kodo antu sino bilawalidini isana. Allah has commanded us, He has admonished us to do good to our parents, both fathers and mothers. Kamakodo and Tabudu, as he commanded that we should worship him and we should not worship another thing beside him. 
Now, Almana Ali Ijmali, you the ayah, the comprehensive or the detailed explanation uh, of this ayah. Al Iqbar, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Amaro, Wawaso, Ala Al Sunni Rusulihi, and Yobada Wahdau, Duna Masiwa. That is, uh, there is a message that Almighty Allah, may He be the glory. Uh, commanded and admonished uh, through the tongues of the messengers that none should be worshipped except him. Wa an yu sina al waladu ila walidei sana. And it was he commanded that the child should be dutiful to his parents, the child should do good to his parents. Will call in speech while pain and in action. Whenever you are talking to them, you must show respect to your parents. Whenever you are reacting towards whatever they might have said, you must react to them with what? With respect. This is Islam that was brought to us from Allah through Prophet Muhammad. Therefore, when you see a child abusing, cursing, misbehaving to his parents, such a child is, is not a good child, according to the dictionary of Islam. Even if you are feeding them, you are insulting them, you are cursing them, you are abusing them. And another point, those of you that you don't curse your father or your mother directly, so you can curse someone's father or mother. Or you can abuse someone's father or mother, you are also doing such to your own, to your own parents. Or my life is like this. Or my father 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 is like this. That is the reason why you should not abuse or curse someone's parents. Wala, you see Willie Hima, and you should not do bad to your father and to your mother. You should not be tired. There is a poem we are still coming towards when we finish this one. Inshallah ta'ala about our parents. Ya Abi Anta Habibi Anta Alul Mukramati Minka Majidi Minka Inzi. Min kadati e wa sifati Anta tasaya li sururi Anta tashka li najati So, ila hakiri dhalika nashid With all this, you will know that you must be dutiful to your parents. Wallahi, my children in Islam. All of you are my children. I have child that is older than every one of you here. So, listening to this advice is a fatherly advice. Wallahi, when we were like you, uh, though, alhamdulillah, I was raised by a good father and a good mother. I've never caused or abused someone's parent in my life. Even in secondary school, that some of us we like to spoil our father's name. Isn't it? I didn't do that because I started learning Islamic education right from my childhood since when I was four years old. And it has great impact in my life, alhamdulillah. I'm not saying this that I'm perfect, but alhamdulillah to some extent. So it is not easy to take care of, of you. Wallahi, you will not appreciate it until when you find yourself in our level. Yoba used to say, Omo Tony Babo Mola, Tony Babo Molo, Lolo, and Elona Wine, I even call it. When you meet yourself, you will know what your daddy went through before he will raise you up to where he might have raised you up to. Likewise, your mother. It is not easy. The bomb will allow be. If you know more, allow the moon to lower your mother. Mina. 
And it is that thing that makes me to always pray for my daddy. May Almighty Allah forgive him. Amen. And that is the reason why I am taking care of my mother. May Allah continue to bless me so that I will take care of her. I want to build a house for her. I want to buy a car for her. I want to send her to Hajj before she would depart. And may Allah give her long life and prosperity. Wallah, it is, it, is, it, it is not easy. I could remember when we wanted to do a egg and there was no money. I wanted to opt out. Hey, oh, let me forget about school. My mommy said, no. Even if it is to sell all our clothes, because of that wa egg, I will sell it and you will do that exam. With that singular act, I don't forget my mom. I don't. Because if my education has messed up then, will I be able to stand before you today and speak English up to 30 minutes, or even more than 30 minutes now? She laid the foundation along with our father, and likewise Arabic. My father laid the foundation for us, and I can't count the reward that my father will have earned through my own actions. Because he was my first Muallim. I completed Quran with him. Apart from the one that we read in Madrasa, he supervised my Quran until when I was able to read Quran fluently. The Almighty Allah reward him. And I produced many students. So he will be having rewards in all the students that pass through me as well. So it is not very easy. That is the reason why you should not trouble your daddy or your mommy. Maybe you need something and they say, ah, you don't have. Accept it and look for another means. For life is not very easy. So don't use, hey, I want this. You didn't give me. Hey, 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 why did you give birth to me? You are a bastard. Yeah. If you could utter such a statement to your daddy or to your mommy, you are a bastard. No apology. If it is easy, you too go and walk. And you will see what your daddy is facing. Many fathers have died because they want their children to survive. I could remember one man. He went to go and work. He was a carpenter. There was nothing for the children and the wife to eat at home. And he said, ah, my dear, don't worry. But so, so, so time. Come and meet me where I am working. So the wife went there. He gave the wife the money to go and prepare for their meal. And in the evening, before he would close, he fell from the top of the building. And the man died. So many fathers are passing through uh, difficulties before they will be able to get money for your feeding, to pay for your school fees, to buy clothes for you, to buy shoes for you. So you should try to appreciate it. And even if they lack it, you should not let shaitan mislead you to the point of uttering bad statements to your father or to your mother. I've witnessed the children that beat their fathers. The children that beat their mothers. They are bastards. Even if the fathers were their biological fathers or their, their, their mothers really gave birth to them. And finally, there was a story. There was a man that asked a father, I have the book here. I will even, I will give you I will give you, maybe after the lesson, so that you yourself will go and read it. Dutifulness and undutifulness to the parents. I will give it out to be a sadakotun jariya for my dad. Inshallah ta'ala. So, in a nutshell, hey, the father was seriously sick. And the child really tried. But out of impatience, he took his father to the river and threw the father into the river. After so many years, the issue reoccurred. He also fell ill. 
and his own child also faced what he faced during his own father. When he couldn't bear it again, he also took the father to that same river that he threw his own father. When they got to the river, the man now remember what he did to his own father. He was now pleading to the child, ah, don't throw me inside the river. Just drop me at the bank of the river. Because you see what you are doing. This is exactly what I did to my own father. This is where I brought my father to, and I threw him inside the river. I didn't know whether it was crocodile or a fish or snake that later swallowed him. I don't know. But just not to your core, in your own life, so that your own child will not do similar to you as well. Put me here and find your way until I die here. Can you see the law of retribution? A son. So whatever you do to your parents, you will receive it. It is not a cause. So I'm just telling you this so that you will always remember. You will also remember not to do bad to your parents. Look at what Sheikh Fawzani said. The, the reason why you must not do bad to your parents is that both of them stood up to take care of you. How much can we evaluate that they are spent on you even before birth? Tell me, you want to know how much you know you. But that you are the way you calculate. Go continue. We solely pay your daddy feed you with five hundred naira daily. Just put it like that, or two hundred. Abi, how many days do we have in a month? Okay, don't let us go. Don't worry yourself. We have 365 days. Yeah. Abi, multiply it by 200 naira. How much will that be? And multiply it by your age. The hospital bill is not there. Abi, ah, uh, my baby is feeling hot. Uh, let me go and buy this or that. They are not there. The cloth are not only feeding. Now, the amount that your father might have spent when you started schooling. Look at the level you find yourself now. Just, just ask, how old was I when I started kindergarten? How much were you paying for my school fees? You know that before you go to SS level, your money will have increased increasing it. Forget about that. Let us just assume that they pay 10,000 Naira per term. Three terms. Abi, that's 30,000. Oh yeah, multiply it by this is the year that you have spent in school. You now see that it is not a joke. Your fathers and mothers are really trying. May Almighty Allah reward them all. Amen. May Almighty Allah make you good children so that you will be able to take care of them. Amen. Now, uh, we will not be able to finish this page today and inshallah Ta'ala, by next week we shall continue. Uh, I ask Almighty Allah to make this today's uh, Madrasa al to benefit us in this life and in the hereafter. Subhanaka Allah wa bi'amdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astagfiruka wa atubu ilik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.